Hello students, this is your history lesson. Today we are going to read chapter 11 towards partition and Pakistan 1940 to 1947 from understanding history for class 8. So we start our lesson. This is page number 75. The 1930s had been a journey of discovery to create a separate identity for the Muslims of India. The 1940s became the struggle to achieve that identity in the shape of a separate state for the Muslims of India. On 23rd March 1940, the All India Muslim League gave a concrete shape to the aspirations of the Muslims for a separate state in a historic meeting at Lahore. The Lahore Resolution of 1940 in the open and spacious grounds of Mento Park with the majestic Lahore Fort and the Grand Bachai Mosque of the Mughals in the background. 100,000 Muslims gathered in Lahore to listen to Mr. Jinnah explain. The Hindus and the Muslims belong to two different civilizations which are based mainly on conflicting ideas. To yoke together to such nations under single state, one as a numerical minority and the other as a majority, must lead to growing discontent and the final destruction of such a state. This idea of a separate homeland for the Muslims had already been defined by Ilam Iqbal in his presidential address to the Muslim League at Allahabad in 1930. Before him, Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan in, in, in 1870 had described the Hindus and Muslims as two nations. In 1933, Chaudhary Rahmat Ali had demar uh, demarcated 10 Muslim regions in India to be grouped under the name of Pakistan, Punjab, Afghania, Northwest Frontier Province, Kashmir and Tan for Balochistan. On 23rd March 1940, the idea had shaped itself into a clear course of action to be taken by Mr. Jinnah. He became for the Muslims of India their Qaid Azam or great leader. A.K. Fazlul Haq, the chief minister of Bengal, moved the resolution that adopted the goal of a separate state for the Muslims in India to be called Pakistan. The motion was seconded by Chaudhary Khalikul Zaman and all other prominent members of the All India Muslim League. The gist of the resolution was the demand for a Muslim state comprising geographically closed regions where Muslims were in a majority. Mr. Gandhi reacted and said that the idea of partition meant the vivisection of Mother India and Mr. Jinnah termed it a mad scheme. But the course was set for the Muslim League and it was only a matter of time before a solution to the communal problem was solved through a partition plan. The event that would speed it up happened soon after. The world once again was engulfed in a war which would bring destruction to Europe put an end to colonization and imperialism and bring in a new world order. The role of women and students in the Pakistan movement. The role of women and students in the movement for an independent Pakistan is equally important, especially from the Lahore Resolution onwards. By 1940, the women's wing of the Muslim League included members from all classes and the first session was held at Islamia Women's College, Lahore. In 1942, the Qaid invited by the Punjab Girls Students Federation addressed the students of Jinnah Islamia Girls College. He said, I am glad to see that not only Muslim men but Muslim women and children have also understood the Pakistan scheme. No nation can make any progress without the cooperation of its women. If Muslim women support their men as they did in the day of the Prophet of Islam, peace be upon him, we should soon realize our, our goal. 
No nation is capable of remaining strong unless and until its men and women struggle together for the achievement of its goals. Among those actively involved were Miss Fatma Jinnah, Begum Rana Liaquat Ali Khan, Begum Shaista Ikramullah, Begum Jahan Ara Shahnawaz, and Begum Salma Tasadduk, besides many other ladies. Jojendra Nath Mendel from Bengal and Jagannath Azad were two prominent Hindus who joined the struggle for Pakistan. Sir Victor Turner and Alvin Robert Cornwells were also a part of the Pakistan movement. A. R. Cornwells went on to become the first Chief Justice of Pakistan. These are just a few names from among many uh, who supported the Pakistan movement and went on to serve Pakistan in various capacities after independence. The Congress response to the Lahore Resolution. The Congress had resigned from the government at the outbreak of the war in 1939, but the Muslim League worked with the British government in the war effort and at the same time strengthened its position as the sole spokesman for the Muslims of India. Gandhi too sympathized with the British government, but with Japan reaching the borders of India by 1942, he pressed for Ponaswaj or complete independence from British rule. The British cabinet also felt that the national government was the answer to India's problems right after the war was over. In the meantime, in the meantime, Sir Stafford Cripps was sent with a delegation to negoti negotiate with the Indian leaders in 1942. The Krebs Proposals 1942 The Krebs Mission, headed by Sir Stafford Krebs, was sent by the British government to talk to the Indian leaders and obtain their cooperation and loyalty for Britain's war efforts in World War II. The Indian leaders were assured that they would be given full self-government but only after the war was over. The Crips proposals failed because full dominion status could only be given after the war and a new assembly had to be elected to frame a constitution. Any state or province which wished to opt out of the new arrangements arrangement would be allowed to do so till the war ended. All Indian parties could join an inter in term government with the viceroy and his consul. Both Congress and the League rejected the proposals for different reasons. Gandhi did not like the idea of states separating from a united India. Mr. Jana could see the making of Pakistan built into the proposals but did not wish to compromise on the constitution-making process. Impatient with the intentions of the British government, Mr. Gandhi asked them to quit India immediately and let the Indians rule themselves. The Quit India Movement of 1942 The Quit India Movement was meant to disrupt, disrupt, interrupt an event, activity or process by causing a disturbance or problem. The working of the British government by the Congress caught just one day, 8 August 1942, to protest. The next day, on 99 August, the government arrested Mr. Gandhi, Mr. Nehru and most of the Congress leaders, although by the time the movement was called off, enough damage had been done to government property and precious lives were lost. Mr. Jinnah's reaction to the Quit India movement was that he added an extra word to it. It was divide and quit. The Jinnah Gandhi Talks 1944 When Mr. Gandhi was released from jail, a meeting between him and Mr. Jinnah was set up at the latter's residence in Bombay. Through the efforts of Mr. Raja Gopalachari, a former Congress Premier of Madras, 
Mr. Jinnah had taken the initiative by saying in the Muslim League meeting in Delhi 1943, Nobody would welcome it more than myself if Mr. Gandhi is even now willing to come to a settlement with the Muslim League on the basis of Pakistan. An agreement could only be reached if Congress accepted a separate state and nationality for the Muslims of India, but Mr. Gandhi was not willing to accept the division of India. Although he acknowledged the right of the Muslims to run their own affairs, but not a separate nation. The talks were unsuccessful as Mr. Jinnah wanted to complete acceptance of the Lahore Resolution of 1940 in the agreement. The Jinnah Gandhi talks highlighted an important development in Hindu-Muslim relations. Mr. Jinnah was recognized as the sole leader of the Muslim League, a party which could negotiate on equal terms with the leader of the other major party in India, the Congress. World War II comes to an end. World War II ended in 1945, which Britain facing a severe economic crisis. It was clear that it could no longer hold on to its colonies. Viceroy Wewal called the Indian parties to Simla for a conference in 1945 and made an offer to the parties to form a viceroy's council which would serve as the government of India. Its task would be the transfer of power from Britain. The council would include only two British members, the viceroy himself and the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. The Simla Conference of 1945 failed because of two reasons. Mr. Jinnah insisted that it was the Muslim League's right to choose the Muslim members on the council. However, Congress with its Muslim president, president and other Muslim members felt it had the right to appoint the Muslim members as it represented, as it represented all of India. While the Simla conference was in progress, the war in Europe came to an end with the surrender of the Japanese on 15 August 1945. The Labour Party came into power and the Prime Minister Clement Attlee was adamant, adamant determined not to change belief or decision that India be given independence as quickly as possible. The elections of 1945 to 1946. Clement Attlee announced elections to both the central and provincial assemblies in India, which all parties decided to contest. The election results proved momentous as they decided the future of the Indian subcontinent and its partition into two separate states. The elections demonstrated the Muslim League's success in convincing the Muslims of India that a separate Muslim state, Pakistan, was the only solution for them. The divide in voting was clearly visible. Muslim League won the entire Muslim vote in the elections, while Congress won all the non-Muslim votes. The Muslim League had proved that it was the sole representative of Muslim India and that Congress represented the Hindus. The Cabinet Mission Plan 1946 In March 1946, the British government made a last attempt to keep a united India. It sent out a three-member Cabinet Mission which included Lord Pethick, Lawrence, Sir Stafford Krebs, and Lord A.V. Alexander. The three members spent many weeks in discussion with the Indian political leaders from all parties, but when no progress was made, the cabinet mission announced their own plan. It proposed an all-India union with both British India and princely states, the All India Union to have an executive and a legislature. It would take care of foreign affairs, defense and communications and have the powers to raise finance for them. An important decision on 
communal and religious problems will be decided by both majority of Hindus and Muslims. The provinces will be grouped together under A, B and C clusters. Group A Hindu provinces of United and Central Provinces, Orissa, Madras and Bombay. Group B Predominantly Muslim provinces of Sindh, Punjab, North, Western Frontier and Balochistan. Group C, Bengal and Assam, where the majority was tilted in, in the Muslims' favor. Each provincial group would elect its own government and determine its day-to-day -day affairs. The All India Union would include elected representatives from each of the provincial groups. The Congress objected to the grouping of the province while the Muslim League objected to the partition of large provinces such as Punjab and Bengal. Nonetheless, the Muslim League accepted the proposal as mainly Muslim provinces were grouped together. Mr. Nehru, on the other hand, said that Congress was not bound by any agreement and was free to make changes once in power. The next task of the cabinet mission plan was the making of the interim. Interim means the time between particular periods of events. Interim government. The British government had promised that even if one party backed out from joining the interim government, the other parties would go ahead with it. When the Congress had first refused the British government should have gone ahead and made the interim government with the Muslim League and others, but they delayed matters till the Congress decided to accept the plan. Mr. Nehru was asked to head the interim government in 1946. The League refused to join because it felt betrayed. Only much later did they agree and Liaquat Ali Khan accepted the post of finance minister. Direct Action Day 1946 Kaidiazam and the Muslim League who had already accepted the cabinet mission plan were, were frustrated by the negotiations between the Congress and the British who appeared to favor the former's plans rather than the idea of Pakistan. As a result, Muslim League completely rejected the cabinet mission's plan and Qaeda-e-Azam announced a direct action day on 16 August 1946. What we have done today is the most historic in our history. Never have we in the whole history of the Muslim League done anything except by constitutional matters. But now, we are obliged and forced into this position. This day we bid goodbye to constitutional matters. However, communal violence flared up after direct action day was announced and thousands died especially on the states of Kolkata. The cabinet mission admitted failure to resolve the plan for giving independence to India as the two main parties refused to compromise. Prime Minister Clement Italy decided on a definite date for the transfer of power, which would be June 1948. To do that, he took two major decisions. He recalled Lord Wavell and chose Lord Mountbatten as the Viceroy to oversee the transfer of power at the earliest and in the best way possible. Independence and Partition Lord Mountbatten accepted the position of being India's last viceroy to su supervise partition on two conditions. One, if he was given full powers to negotiate without interference from London. Two, if he was made Britain's first sea lord after the job was done. When Lord Mountbatten took over on 20. 2nd March 1947, not much was left to be done as talks with the main leaders. Nehru, Patel and Jinnah had already proved the decision for Mountbatten was in how partition would take place and when. His plan to exceed Pakistan was rejected by Nehru, 
who felt if Pakistan was acceded, then other states would follow suit. The crisis was re resolved by V.P. Man Manon, who advised that India should be divided clearly into just two states, India and Pakistan, both given dominion sta status as members of the Commonwealth, Commonwealth, as members of the Commonwealth. It was also decided that Punjab and Bengal could no, not be made independent and must be divided. Lord Mountbatten's plan was also accepted by the British cabinet. It was Lord Mountbatten's decision to bring partition forward one year ahead to 15 August 1947. The plan was formally presented to the Indian political leaders in Delhi. Baldev Singh accepted on behalf of the six. Nehru and Patel said that they would accept it on behalf of the Congress on condition that the Muslim League accepted it also. The next day, 3rd June, Qaeda Azam announced his acceptance of the partition plan. The Independence Act, 18 July 1947 with Congress and Muslim League's acceptance of the 3rd June plan, the British Parliament passed the Independence Act in July 1947. It marked the end of the British Raj in India. The Act provided the following directives. The creation of two independent dominions of India and Pakistan. The governments of the states will follow the Act of 1935 till the Constituent Assemblies of the new states frame our constitution. The British government would have no control over the new dominions after 15 August 1947. The dominions will have a governor general by popular consent. The division of territory was to be accompanied by a division of the assets of the British Raj between the two dominions. Everything from monetary assets, civil bureaucracy, armed forces and military equipments, equip, uh, equipment down to office equipment such as paper pens and paper clips had to be meticulously divided. The division was based on the ratio of 17 India, 5 Pakistan. Students, Monetary means relating to money or currency. Meticulously means very careful in every detail. The Red Cliff Award. For division of territory, two boundary commissions were appointed with two Hindu and two Muslim judges. Sir Cyril Radcliffe was appointed chairman of the, both the commissions. Since the judges appointed for the task could not come to an agreement, Radcliffe had to take the final decision himself and this came to be known as the Radcliffe Award. The results were announced by Lord Mountbatten, now Governor General of India, on 16 August 1947. What remained was the fate of the princely states surrounded by either India or Pakistan. Most of them were Hindu majority states and were given the option to join either India or Pakistan or remain independent. The Congress asked Mountbatten to use his influence to persuade most of the princes to join India and many of them compiled as they were Hindu ruling a majority Hindu population. By August 1947, three states were still undecided, Kashmir, Hyderabad and Jonagar. Kashmir had a Muslim majority population and a Hindu ruler while Hyderabad and Jonagar had both Muslim and Hindu populations with Muslim rulers. The delay by the Dogra Raja of Kashmir in joining either India or Pakistan would create a long-standing dispute between the two countries which is still unresolved. 
in the case of junagar and hyderabad india would use its armed forces to force a decision junagar was forcibly taken over in 1947 when india sent its paramilitary forces into the state the indian government waited for a more opportune movement to take over the rich and advanced state of hyderabad deccan on 12 September 1948 the day after the Qaid e Azam passed away India sent its forces into Hyderabad and took it over as part of India Independence for India on the eve of 14 August 1947 Jawaharlal Nehru addressed the constituent assembly in Delhi he said long years ago we made a trust trust Uh, with destiny and now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge pledge a promise or agreement that must be kept not wholly or in full measure but very substantially substantially to a great or uh, significant event at the stroke of the midnight hour when the world sleeps india shall wake to life and freedom a movement comes which comes but rarely in history when we step out from the old to the new when an age ends and when the soil of a nation long suppressed finds utterance independence day lord mount betton had hoped to be made governor general of both the dominions of india and pakistan but the qaid e azam disagreed with that and decided to be the first governor general of pakistan this would make the world view pakistan as a sovereign independent state separate from india on 7 august 1947 qaid e azam flew to karachi Karachi to be sworn in as the governor general of the nation he had founded against all odds he was accompanied by his sister Fatima Jana he stepped off the Dakota aircraft on to the soil of sin the land that Muhammad bin Qasim had conquered in 712 and introduced a new religion Islam to Hindustan the fulfillment of the qaid's mission is eloquently explained by Akbar as Ahmad Islam gave the muslims of india a sense of identity dynasties like the moguls gave them territory poets like alam akbar gave them a sense of destiny jinnah's towering stature derives from the fact that by leading the pakistan movement and creating the state of pakistan he gave them all free for the pakistanis he is simply the qaid e azam or the great leader whatever their political affiliation they believe there is no one quite like him qaid e azam the founder of the nation qaid e azam addressed pakistan's constituent assembly when it met for the first time on 11 august 1947 he gave clear directions as to what the independent state of pakistan was to be for its citizens you will know doubt agree with me that the first duty of the government is to maintain law and order so that the life property and religious beliefs of its subjects are fully protected by the state the second thing that occurs to me is this one of the biggest curses from which india is suffering is bribery and corruption we must put that down with an iron hand and other legacy is black marketing yet another is the evil of nepotism and jobbery students nepotism means a type of favoritism which is granted to relatives and friends in various fields and jobbery means the practice of making pri uh, private profit out of a public office what was most distressing to the qaid was the question of the minorities those muslims who were left behind in india as a minority and those non muslims the state of pakistan had acquired 
he wanted a fair and just treatment for them in the country of their choice you are free you are free to go to your temples you are free to go to your mosques or any other place of worship in the state of pakistan you may belong to any religion or caste or creed that has nothing to do with the business of state we are starting with this fundamental principle that we are all citizens and equal citizens of one state born out of the tremendous sac uh, sacrifices of the thousands of people who lost their lives at partition pakistan had to survive and be the model state that the qaid envisaged envisaged to imagine or expect something in the future the partition of the subcontinent saw the greatest cross migration of people in world history 12 to 15 million people left their homes and belongings in fear of destruction looting and murder many never reached their destination trains laden with dead bodies came into lahore while delhi experienced a killing spree that made most muslims run to the pona kila for shelter In the last year of his life Qaid Azam's health continued to fail and he became frail and weak despite his failing health the Qaid Azam visited Dhaka and Peshawar and continued to give direction to the state he had founded in June 1948 he moved from Karachi to Quetta so that the clean and fresh air of the mountainous that you would do him good when his health further deteriorated deteriorated he moved to ziarat a hill station of balochistan in july 1948 on 11th september at 10:30 qaid azam breathed his last the people of pakistan paid homage to their beloved leader by facing courageously the tremendous odds against its survival in the early days of its existence bravely living with a terminal illness so that pakistan could be born the qaid passed away barely 13 months later on 11 september 1948 the out Pouring of grief by the nation was immense, and the feeling of loss even greater. Thousands attended his funeral, and a grateful nation built him a mausoleum that towers over the city of Karachi, and its pristine white marble is visible from miles around. Stony Wall Park pays tribute to the founder of the Pakistani nation. few individuals significantly alter the course of history alter make structural changes to a building fewer still modify the map of the world hardly anyone can be credited with creating a nation state muhammad ali jinnah did all three hailed as qaid e azam or great leader of pakistan and its first governor general jinnah Watchly conjured, conjured to make something appear by magic or as if by magic. That country into statehood by the force of his indomitable will, indomitable, impossible to subdue or defeat. Now come to the question. Question one: Why was the Lahore Resolution passed in nineteen forty? Answer. This idea of a separate homeland for the Muslims had already been defined by Ilama Iqbal in his presidential address to the Muslim League at Allahabad in 1930. Before him, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan in 1870 had described the Hindus and Muslims as two nations. In 1933, Chaudhry Rahmat Ali had demarcated ten Muslim regions in India. to be grouped under the name of Pakistan the 1940s became the struggle to achieve that identity in the shape of a separate state for the muslims of india on 23rd march 1940 the all indian the all uh, india muslim uh, league gave a concrete shape to the 
aspiration of the Muslims for a separate state in a historic meeting at Lahore. Question 2. Why did the Krebs proposals fail? Answer. The Krebs proposals failed because full dominion state status could only be given after the war and a new assembly had to be elected to frame a constitution. Both Congress and the League rejected the proposal for different reasons. Gandhi did not like the idea of sta uh, states separating from a united India. Mr. Jana could see the making of Pakistan built into the proposals but did not wish to compromise on the, on the constitution making process. Question 3. What was the result of the Jinnah Gandhi talks in 1944? Answer. The Jinnah Gandhi talks highlighted an important development in Hindu Muslim relations. Mr. Jinnah was recognized as the sole leader of the Muslim League, a party which could negotiate on equal terms with the leader of the other major party in India, the Congress. Question 4. Describe the impact of the Second World War on Indian politics. Answer. In World War II, British faced a severe economic crisis. It was clear that it could no longer hold on its colonies. The war in Europe came to an end with the surrender of the Japanese on 15 August 1945. The, Lahore, the, the Labour came into power and the Prime Minister Clement Attali was adamant India be given independence as quickly as possible. Question 5. What was the purpose of the Simla conference called by Lord Wewell? Answer. Viceroy Wewell called the Indian parties to Simla for a conference in 1945 and made an offer to the parties to form a Viceroy Council which would serve as the government of India. Its, talk, its, its task would be the transfer of power from Britain. The Council would include only two British members, the Viceroy himself and the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Question 6. Why were the elections of 1945 to 1946 so important for the Muslim League? Answer. Clement Attali announced elections to both the central and provincial assemblies in India, which all parties decided to contest. The election results proved momentous as they decided the future of the Indian subcontinent and its partition into two separate states. The elections demonstrated the Muslim League's success in convincing the Muslims of India that a separate Muslim state, Pakistan was the only solution for them. The Muslim League had proved that it was the sole representative of Muslim India and the Congress represented the, Hin the Hindus. Question 7. Explain how the Cabinet Mission Plan tried to keep a united India. Answer. In March 1946, the British government made a last attempt to keep a united India. The cabinet mission was established to secure an agreement with the leaders of the Indian political groups regarding the making of a constitution for India, to establish a body for framing the future constitution of India and to create an executive council with Indian support. The Congress Party and the Muslim League had basic ideological differences and this was hindering them from finding any common ground. Question 8. Why was a direct action day called by the Qaid Azam? Answer. Qaid Azam and the Muslim League, who had already accepted the cabinet mission plan, were frustrated by the negotiations between the Congress and the British, who appeared to favor the former's plans rather than the idea of Pakistan. As a result, Muslim League completely rejected the cabinet mission's plan and Qaeda Azam announced a direct action day on 6th August 1946. Question 9. Briefly describe the part played by the Qaeda Azam in the making of Pakistan. 
answer qaid azam muhammad ali jinnah started his political career in the year 1906 when he was selected as private secretary to dada bai naroji in the year 1909 the muslims of bombay selected him as their representative and the same year jinnah was elected a member of the imperial legislative council in the year 1913 when qaid was in london where he met Mulana Muhammad Ali Johar who invited him to join the All India Muslim League the same year Jinnah became a member of the Muslim League in the year 1916 due to the efforts of the Qaeda the Lucknow Pact was signed between the Muslim League and the Congress due to this pact the Qaeda was called ambassador of Hindu Muslim unity but this unity did not last long and in the year 1924 this unity vanished because of non cooperative attitude of mr gandhi in the khilafat movement in the year 1929 qaid azam wrote a long letter to the british prime minister sir ramse macdonald in order to find a political solution for india due to qaid's efforts three sessions of round table conference was held in london in the year 1939 the second world war broke out and the congress demanded maximum provincial autonomy which was not acceptable to the government of india due to which congress ministers resigned and the muslim took a sign of relief on 23rd march 1940 the idea had shaped itself into a clear course of action to be taken by muhammad by mr jina he became for the muslims of india their qaid azam or great leader in the year 1944 Five, the Simla conference was held, but due to the non-cooperative attitude of the leaders of the Congress, it failed. In the year 1946, the Cabinet Mission Plan came to India to find out a solution for the political crisis of India. But in this government, a lot of differences cropped up. Hence, the Qaid directly demanded the establishment of Pakistan after the arrival of Lord. Mount Betton in March 1947 he met Qaid and the leaders of Congress and presented the proposal of 3rd June in 1947 which was acceptable to the Muslim League and Congress and thus due to great efforts of the Qaid the Assam Pakistan came into being on 14 August 1947 Question 10 what direction did the Qaid the Assam give to the new state of Pakistan Answer: Qaid Azam gave clear directions as to what independent state of Pakistan was to be for its citizens. You will no doubt agree with me that the first duty of a government maintain law and order so that the life, property, and religious beliefs of its subjects are fully protected by the state. The second thing that occurs to is this: one of the biggest curses from which India is suffering is. bribery or corruption we must must put that down with an iron hand and other legacy black mark catering yet another is the evil of nepotism and job he wanted a fair and just treatment for them in the country of their choice the kaid's last message you are free you are free to go to your temples you are free to go to your mass mosques or any other place of worship in the state of pakistan you may belong to any religion or caste or creed that has nothing to do with the business of state we are starting with this fundamental principle that we are all citizens and equal citizens of one state thanks for listening for new videos don't forget to subscribe my channel and if you like my videos Please share and like.